Hey there everyone, Mr. Lewis here, ready to kick off with a new unit in AP Hug today. But first, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday if you celebrated and enjoyed a nice, long, relaxing weekend. I know I am truly appreciative and thankful of everything you've been doing up to this point. You continue to impress me time and time again with your diligence and your effort and your ability to keep up with what must be a pretty overwhelming schedule for a lot of you right now. So I really, really do appreciate it. And all I can ask is that you keep it up. And I know you will. Moving on with unit four, which is our new unit today, we are studying religion and ethnicity this section. And this is a really interesting unit because we get to really study the whole spectrum of religion from monotheism to polytheism to atheism. And it's interesting to look at how these religions started with just one person in many cases and then expanded to two billion or more, as is the case with Islam and Christianity. And to look at the diffusion and how this all happened over the years is really examining this uh, big part of history, right? Religion has dictated and determined some of the key changes, of course, in history. And uh, we're going to see how that occurred all the way from Asia to Europe, into Africa, into North America and South America. And of course, we're going to focus a little bit more closely on the United States and get a, in some cases even, a county by county breakdown and see which religions are predominantly practiced in different parts of the country and, as we mentioned, different parts of the world. So I think this is a really cool unit. We're also going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the aspects and the cultures of the biggest religions in the world. And uh, you're going to see what those are today. So without further ado, let's take a look. Religion and ethnicity. And we will get into ethnicity in the later stages of Unit 4. So going into next week, these first few sections focus solely on religion. So Section 4.1 is called Distribution of Religion. And it's an introduction to the basic spread of the major religions around the world. We have over 7 billion people in the world who follows what religions, if any. So the top four look like this, and they're ranked in terms of adherents or followers. Coming in at first is Christianity, with just under 2.5 billion. In second is Islam, with just under 2 billion followers. In third is Hinduism with 1.2 billion. And in fourth is Buddhism with just over half a billion, about 500 million. Another 6% of the world follows some type of folk religion, a very unique, usually isolated religion with a smaller number of followers. So there are many, many, many different folk religions, hundreds around the world. And about 6% of the world's population follows one of them. Another 1% of the world population adheres to something different, such as Judaism, Sikhism, both religions that we will look at. And then about 16% of the world population is unaffiliated. This doesn't necessarily mean atheist, which is not believing in any god. It could be agnostic, which just means that you believe in some higher power, but... You don't know if it's one god or many gods or, or even if you want to use that term god at all. That would be uh, agnostic. And 16% of the world falls into agnostic, atheistic, um, or just otherwise irreligious or unaffiliated in some way. So more than 77%, almost 80% of the world population follows one of those four major religions that I mentioned. Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, or Buddhism. Uh, just over 31%, so almost a third of the world, is Christian. Just under 25%, so about a quarter of the world, is Muslim. And about 15% of the world is Hindu. And most of the world's Hindus live in India because it is an ethnic religion and appeals uh, specifically to 
um, uh, a certain ethnic group, right? Uh, the Indian people and, and their culture. And then uh, about 16% of the world, as we mentioned, is unaffiliated. So I mentioned Hinduism is an ethnic religion. An ethnic religion compared to a universalizing religion, which is really the main categorization for religion. It's broken down into one of these two first, universalizing or ethnic. An ethnic religion, it's meant to appeal primarily to one ethnic or cultural group. It could be because it was designed that way. It could be because history has deemed it so, and that religion has become so intertwined with a specific ethnic group that uh, that's where it's predominantly found. The other side of this is a universalizing religion. A universalizing religion attempts to appeal to everyone around the world and really uh, is very active in proselytization or, or trying to uh, bring others into the fold, so to speak, trying to um, bring others into your faith and, and uh, add to your numbers, uh, so to speak. And, and so this is what missionary work is all about, right? Trying to go out and spread the word of your religion and uh, bring others into your world. So that's universalizing and ethnic. And the, the uh, three of the four um, top religions in the world in terms of followers are universalizing religions. That's uh, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. They... Uh, accept people from all ethnic groups and actively um, send missionaries out to uh, spread the word of their religions and, and welcome others into the group. Whereas um, uh, Hinduism is the largest ethnic religion in the world. Sikhism and Baha'ism are also two universalizing religions, but just because a religion is universalizing doesn't necessarily mean it is going to have the same uh, number of followers as Christianity or Islam, right? Those are very unique cases. Um, Sikhism is uh, uh, followed by a relatively speaking small number of individuals compared to Christianity or Islam or Hinduism, but it is a universalizing religion. Uh, and uh, uh, Baha'ism is also a, uh, a universalizing religion. So, how is this all distributed? We, we have the numbers, but what does this look like around the world? You can see on this map, the areas in orange are predominantly Christian. The areas in green on this world map are predominantly Muslim. And then areas in pink are predominantly Hindu. Bo uh, Buddhists are in blue. And then gray, as you can see in China here, is mostly unaffiliated. And that's a result of hierarchical diffusion because of the communist government that is, um, and, and used to be much more so, very opposed to organized religion. And, and we've seen this in many uh, communist nations throughout history. So a bit of a closer look, uh, more, more of a detailed breakdown here. As you look at the areas that are in darker orange, such as South America compared to the U.S. and Canada, they are more predominantly Christian. If it's lighter orange, it's predominantly Christian, but doesn't have the same level of, of dominance as the dark orange areas. And then in the same way, dark green countries are predominantly Muslim. Lighter green are predominantly Muslim, but not quite as much. So you can see uh, Islam has this, this arc uh, through most of Africa, into the Middle East and Southwest Asia, and then down into Southeast Asia, specifically Indonesia. And so it started, right, Islam started in Saudi Arabia, that's its heart, that's where its origins are, and then expanded westward into North Africa, where it is very much the dominant cultural and religious force today, and also into uh, Southwest Asia, Central Asia, so we're getting into Iran, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, it's also followed by millions and millions of people in India, all the way down through into Southeast Asia, where it is the uh, dominant religion in Indonesia. In parts of Southeast Asia and Mongolia, you can see that Buddhism 
is heavily concentrated. And then as we move into Russia, Europe, southern parts of Africa, so sub-Saharan Africa all the way down to South Africa, and then into South America and North America, Christianity is the dominant religion. So this map gives you all the details, and I'm not going to go through uh, each of these pie charts individually, but I will say there are some really interesting things that stand out, right? As you look at China and really East Asia in general, because it's not just China, you can see into Japan as well, over half of the population is unaffiliated. You can also see about 20% just under follow some type of folk religion, and we'll see uh, what those might be as we move forward. Folk religions are really interesting to look at. You probably know a lot about the major religions, right? Christianity, Islam, uh, maybe even a little bit about Hinduism and Buddhism, but some of these folk religions you've probably never even heard of. And, and that's what makes them so unique and so interesting. And uh, we'll be able to compare some of the things we already know about religion and the major religions of the world, compare those items against uh, uh, how folk religions look at the world. And I think it, it'll open your eyes up a little bit. And if nothing else, it's just a, a fascinating thing to see those different perspectives, as it always is when we look at culture and anything in this class. So with all that said, I'm going to leave you with one topic and one video today. So in Israel, there has been this conflict going on for the last, really the last 75 years here. And here's what happened. Before World War II, Israel did not exist, right? And as you know, World War II was not very kind to the Jewish people. After the Holocaust, the United Nations decided it would be good to create a territory, a state, a nation where Jews could return to their homeland. Because within this area that we now call Israel and Palestine, there are many uh, sections of Holy Land. There are some very important uh, parts of religious history in this area, both to Jews and Muslims, but also to Christians. This is where Jerusalem and Judea are located. Some of the uh, very important um, parts of, of history in all three of these religions are located within this territory. The, the Wailing Wall, which is a, a very important uh, uh, part of Jewish culture, is located in this territory. So there's a lot of important land here. And, and what happened was it used to be all Palestinian, right? But in 1948, really just after World War II, this was a, a process this area was set aside and called Israel. And what you can see is that over the years from 1946 all the way on the left here, all the area in green was Palestine, to 1947, the UN plan to divide it all up, to 49 to 67, where Palestine has become much smaller now and Israel is, is substantially larger, up through today where uh, Palestinians have been left with really shreds of land compared to what they started with, and Israel has become a dominant force uh, in, in this particular territory, this is an ongoing conflict that still has not been settled up through today. And unfortunately, there's still a lot of violence uh, that takes place because of this conflict. And it's very sad because it's uh, holy land for billions of people across the world. So please take a look at this video. It's not very long but it has a lot of very useful and, and very important information in it. Okay, that is it for section 4.1. Please take a look at that video when you get a chance. That is a very important issue and something that I guarantee you will come up again and again as we move forward. So definitely take a look there. To go with the section 4.1 notes, there is the 4.1 checkpoint in Buzz just to make sure that you're pulling away some of the key information from today's notes. So please go in and do that. You have unlimited attempts to earn those five points. So uh, if you run into any issues or if you need further explanation on something, always feel free to reach out to me and I'll provide that for you. Otherwise, knock out those questions, get those five points, and we will continue with section 4.2 tomorrow. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. 
See you then.